Episode 31 She was leaving. April went blank and then said, Did you really lie to me on purpose so I would eat that box of chocolate? You wish. Aaron snorted and said, I don't really remember what Sylvia likes. April felt a little speechless. Then why did you block my way? Mr. Bennett, could you please step aside? These cupcakes need to be put on the table ASAP, she said. Aaron didn't do what she said. Instead, he stared at her with a complicated look. Earlier, when you were icing these cupcakes, why did you look at me in that way? He asked. In what way? The cupcakes were loaded and it was hard for April to balance the tray. Aaron snorted again and responded, Lovingly? April didn't know what to say. Don't look at me so lovingly again. I'll feel stressed. He continued like a proud peacock. Then he turned and left. April wanted to throw the cupcakes at his face. Lunatic, you overthink everything. Soon all the dishes were served. As it was a get-together, both Sister Emily and April were invited to have dinner with Caitlin's family. Before the dinner started, Caitlin gave April a thick red envelope and said to her, April, thank you for looking after my son these past few months. This is your salary. April paused briefly. She didn't count the money in the envelope, but she knew that it was roughly a thousand dollars. Mrs. Bennett, it's too much. You deserve it, believe me. Caitlin smilingly patted the back of her hand and said, Take it. You've been working hard and this money is nothing to my family. When has it been your position to pay my caretaker? Aaron frowned unhappily. I was afraid that you might be too stingy to pay her, said Caitlin with a smile. And it was I who promised to double her salary. A couple of days earlier, I called her and she told me that you've almost recovered, so she'll leave in two days. I was going to recommend her to a nice job, but she refused. Why didn't you tell me that you were leaving in two days? Aaron's face darkened as he asked April. Mrs. Bennett called me earlier, so I mentioned it to her. I was planning to tell you today, she said. Aaron put down his chopsticks. He suddenly lost his good mood for the get-together. This isn't your first job. Don't you know that you should inform your employer at least a month before you quit? Quitting in two days, I won't accept your resignation, he said. April knitted her brows. Working for another month? That wouldn't be possible as the school term would be starting very soon. Mr. Bennett, it was written in black and white on the contract I signed earlier that my job would be done once you recover. Now you can eat and walk on your own so the rest can be handled by yourself, she said. I need at least half a year to recover completely. Aaron crossed his arms and twisted his thin lips. April couldn't remain calm. Mr. Bennett, do you not want to part with me? She asked. Sylvia, who had been watching this, almost spewed out the cupcake topping out of her mouth. Caitlin was also smiling, looking at April and her son. Hate to part with you? Aaron sneered and said, Don't flatter yourself. I just don't like improper caretakers like you. April sighed and responded with, Improper, maybe. But Mr. Bennett, you don't need my help anymore. And didn't we talk about this before? She looked at him directly in the eyes, quietly and seriously. He suddenly recalled that she once mentioned that her feelings for him were already too strong, so she couldn't even stand to stay in the same city with him. April never said that. Aaron had assumed that. All right, all right. Leave if you want. He started to believe that leaving sooner might be the best thing for her to do. However... Why did he feel so annoyed when realizing that she wouldn't be looking after him anymore? He might have gotten used to her help already. After all, people would even grow feelings towards their pets. Sister April, if anyone dares to bully you in Rosewood City, if you get in any trouble or even end up in jail, just call me. Sylvia patted her chest while saying, There's nothing I can't do in this city. April didn't know how to respond. She thought that it would be better for her to never contact Sylvia again if she got into such trouble. 
I'm afraid she's not going to contact you ever again, said Aaron in a flat tone. She's going back to her hometown in Lukesville. Lukesville? I might not be able to help you then, said Sylvia regretfully. My power hasn't reached that area yet. Aaron felt speechless. You don't even seem to be powerful here in Rosewood City. You've worked for so long, yet you're still doing odd errands for others. Every time you get into trouble, you still come to me to solve it. Sylvia glared at him and said, Go to hell. April muffled her chuckle. If she wasn't seeking revenge or wanted to make her dream come true, she might have stayed. The Bennett family home was a nice place, and here she felt the warmth that had escaped from her life a long time ago. The next day, Derek came back to Bennett Mansion. April moved out of Aaron's bedroom to sleep in a guest room. She lived with Aaron before to take care of him at night, but now that wasn't necessary. At night, Aaron tossed and turned on the bed. He was having insomnia. He raised his head to look at the area near the window. A bed used to be there, but now it had been removed. Streams of moonlight poured onto the parquet floor, giving off a dim glow. He lay back down, still feeling a little uncomfortable. He managed to fall asleep, albeit with difficulty. In the middle of the night, he woke up thirsty. He wanted some water, so he called April's name a few times, yet no one responded. He sat up angrily. A second later, he recalled that April was sleeping in a guest room and would leave tomorrow. In the morning, he came downstairs with dark circles under his eyes and saw April greeting him smilingly. Mr. Bennett, did you sleep well last night? She asked while carrying a plate of sweet corn. Look at me and tell me if I slept well last night. Aaron's cold eyes swept across April's face. Unlike him, she slept quite well. Her dull face had a beautiful luster today and her lips looked soft and moisturized. She didn't seem to be sad about leaving him at all. It didn't make sense to him. It seems that you had a good sleep, he said. She failed to detect his sarcastic tone but responded smilingly with, Yeah, I slept through the whole night since I didn't need to wake up to help you with the bathroom or bring you water. Aaron's face turned even more sullen after he heard her words and he said, What do you mean? Are you trying to say that you couldn't sleep well before because of me? April didn't know how to answer his question. Isn't that obvious? She thought. April didn't understand why Aaron said that, but thinking that she would be leaving soon, she hurriedly said with a soft voice, That's not what I meant. Being able to take care of you has been an honor of mine, Mr. Bennett. An honor indeed. You've taken advantage of me a lot, said Aaron with a complicated look. Since I was little, no one had ever touched my private area as frequently as you have. April felt embarrassed. Even though she had gotten used to doing that, her face was still blushed at the mention of it. Seeing her blushing face, Aaron suddenly felt better. His lips slightly twisted as he continued, So you should be satisfied and leave with no regrets. Again, April didn't know how to respond. Um, Mr. Bennett, please have some breakfast. I'll be leaving afterwards. She felt that she would go crazy if this conversation continued. How will you leave? Aaron asked, then pressed his lips together. I don't have a lot of stuff, so I'll take the bus and then change to the subway, April said. Episode 32 Lasagna, Garlic Bread, and Coffee I'll drive you. Aaron stayed silent for a short while, then said slowly, We're going out for breakfast. But where I live and where your company is are two opposite directions. Plus the breakfast is already ready, April said. Still, she felt flattered. It's all right. I own that company so I can go to work at any time I want. Cut the crap. I don't like being disobeyed. After saying that, Aaron walked downstairs. April had no way to change his mind. After saying goodbye to Sister Emily, she packed her bags and followed Aaron to the parking lot. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. The sweet corn had already been boiled. To avoid wastefulness, April grabbed some of it before she left and was now eating while walking. 
Aaron turned to look at her before getting into the car. He saw that she had a piece of corn on her cheek and made her look adorable under the warm sunlight. He frowned slightly and reached out to pick off the corn without thinking. April was surprised and turned her face. Because of this sudden action, the tips of his fingers swept across her red lips. He felt that her lips were as soft and juicy as the jellies that he had touched when he was little. Both of them paused. Aaron blinked and took his hand back swiftly as if he had been hit by an electric current. Eat, eat, eat. You know nothing but how to eat. You must have been a pig in your previous life, he said with a mortified look on his face. I just don't want to waste it, said April while pouting with an innocent look on her face, like a child. Aaron snorted, then turned to get into the car. He believed that he must have lost his mind, and that was why he felt that this old woman looked like a child when pouting. A while later, Aaron glanced at April's small bag, then asked, Is that all of your stuff? Yeah, she answered. Aaron knitted his brows. He now recalled that she had been wearing the same few clothes the whole time. Sometimes he got tired of looking at her clothes. You can't live like this. He sighed, feeling that he was worrying too much about her. Women need to spend some time to make themselves look prettier so that they can catch a man's attention. April thought of Isaac, and a trace of scornfulness flashed across her eyes. Hadn't she tried hard enough to make herself look pretty before? It used to be an accepted fact that she was the prettiest girl in her faculty, but at last, her fiancé still cheated on her and chose Rosaria who wasn't even half as pretty as her. I think men care more about how women act in bed, she said. Are you saying that you're good in bed? Aaron gave her a faint smile and added, But no matter how good you are in bed, you need to be pretty to get men into your bed, right? I'm not good at anything, she said. That's why she lost everything. She dropped her eyes and pressed her lips together. The atmosphere suddenly turned a little sad. Aaron rubbed his nose, thinking that he might have touched a sore spot. He wasn't trying to criticize her. Instead, he just wanted to give her some advice from a man's angle so she could live a better life in the future. He coughed slightly, then took out a stack of money from his billfold, handed it to her and said, This is your reward for saving me at the hospital the last time and pointing out the mistake in the contract, he said. April paused in shock. There was more money here than what she had been given by Mrs. Bennett. Mr. Bennett, I can't take this. Mrs. Bennett has already paid me much more than I was supposed to earn. You shouldn't give me more. I don't deserve this. April, do you know what I hate about some people the most? Aaron said with a deep voice sounding like a strong and successful man. It is that when they obviously want something, they have to pretend that they don't want it. Do you want me to try to persuade you to accept this money? Don't make me angry or you won't even be able to leave. Take it or don't. April was speechless. She really felt that she didn't deserve the extra money. Do you know what I like about you? Aaron put the money into April's bag and said, I like the way you told Andrew Wheeler and his wife that you don't like people who take advantage of their seniors. April was surprised. She didn't expect Aaron to like anything about her. With your help, I've saved millions of dollars. I've also won quite a lot of money during the New Year holiday. So you deserve this. Aaron gave her a sideways glance and continued, You should know when to be kind and honest and when to not. Otherwise, you'll suffer losses throughout your whole life. You're lucky to have met me. I get it. April lowered her head and said, she would make herself look hypocritical if she rejected the money again. And Aaron's words suddenly awakened her. He was right. She had suffered so many losses already. Some people had taken everything she had away from her so she should act selfishly as she couldn't for such a long time. Mr. Bennett, thank you for your advice, she said. Hearing that, Aaron happily found a comfortable spot in the leather back seat to lean against and asked, where do you want to go for breakfast? I don't mind, she said. Half an hour later, Aaron told the chauffeur to park the car. 
then pointed at a restaurant by the roadside and said to April, Let's have breakfast here. April was stunned when she saw the restaurant. It was her favorite restaurant in Rosewood City. She came here on the fourth day for work in the Bennett family. She hadn't had anything from this restaurant lately, so she certainly missed all those dishes indeed. However, she didn't know why Aaron picked this restaurant. Is the food here really so good that even the boss of Arrington knows about them? She wondered. As she was paused in surprise, Aaron had already gotten out of the car. She had no choice but to follow behind him slowly. Mr. Bennett, why did you pick this place? She asked. Aaron rolled his eyes toward her. Why did he pick this place? Of course it was because he wanted her to have her favorite dishes before leaving. He wanted to do this for her as he believed that she loved him so much. I heard that their lasagna is good, he said. After saying that lazily, he walked toward the restaurant. Many people were eating in the restaurant, but not all the tables were taken. There were still two or three empty seats left. Aaron looked around and then frowned as he regretted coming here. This was the worst breakfast restaurant he had ever seen. The tables hadn't been wiped. The empty bowls and dishes hadn't been put away. Everything was greasy. The people around him were eating very loudly and sounded quite impolite. Seeing the unpleasant look on Aaron's face, April hurriedly asked the waitress to tidy the table, then carefully wiped the table with a clean tissue. After that, Aaron finally sat down and his brows remained knitted. Mr. Bennett, what would you like? She asked Aaron. I'll have whatever you want, grumbled Aaron who was frowning the whole time. April turned to talk to the owner of this restaurant. She ordered two lasagnas, some garlic bread and two cups of coffee. As she turned back, she found Aaron was staring at a rating form from the sanitary bureau hanging on the wall. There was a B on it. I never thought that I'd come to a restaurant graded B for hygiene level in my own life, said Aaron in an exasperated tone. You have my first time. Two girls walked past him and heard the last part of his words. One of them turned back to glance at him in April, then whispered to her friend, How unfair. Such a handsome man gave that ugly woman his first time. So unfair. Hearing that, April inhaled the water that she was drinking and began coughing loudly. Those girls were so mean. After a while, she finally caught her breath. Her face was blushing as she said to Aaron, Mr. Bennett, could you please refrain from saying something that leaves people such a large room for imagination? What did I say? Aaron looked at her scornfully and responded with, You probably feel that way because women have unhealthy minds. April didn't know how to continue this conversation. She decided to say nothing. Episode 33 New Identity Soon breakfast was served. Looking at the cheesy lasagna, April felt that her appetite was aroused. She put some on her plate and then began to savor it. The garlic bread on the side just added to the flavor. She finished her entire meal in about 10 minutes. After that, she raised her head to find that Aaron, who sat in front of her, didn't eat much. Do you not think this is good? She asked. You call this good? He threw the question back to her. I think it's pretty fine. April pouted and said, I didn't ask to come here. Aaron decided to not argue with her as he just wanted her to have a nice breakfast. I know a place in Rosewood City. They make really good lasagna, in fact. All kinds of pasta. I'll take you there next time. Thank you, but I don't think I will have a chance to taste their pasta dishes because I won't be in Rosewood City, she said. You won't come back your whole life. Aaron glanced at April unpleasantly, then continued. Have you saved my number? Don't contact me unless you have to. Don't worry. I won't disturb your life, she said. Aaron put down his fork with an obscure look and said, I mean, you can contact me if you need my help. April felt so speechless. She guessed that she was too stupid to understand the big boss's strange way of talking. Whatever. Did you finish? Let's go if you have finished. 
I can't stand this place for another minute. It's graded B for hygiene level, he complained. All right, she said. Aaron grumpily glanced at her and said, What all right? I waited until now because you are enjoying the meal. April blinked. Are you touched? He smiled proudly and said, Don't be too touched. Remember this moment. It's a pity that you can't have me, but at least you will have good memories. Yes, good memories. April sighed silently. She had gotten used to hearing Mr. Bennett flatter himself from time to time. Half past ten, the luxury vehicle drove into an area with small buildings in Bluewell. The car turned a few times into the narrow roads, then stopped before a four-story shabby house. Have you lived here before? Aaron looked at the house and said, You're a woman. It's not safe for you to live here alone, is it? He remembered that the area used to be a village before he joined the army. Later on, it became a part of the fast-developing city. The local people built some houses and factories, but since the people who stayed there were all poor outlanders, and the surrounding environment in this area was undesired, no developer was willing to invest in this place. It's all right. The landlord of this place is a nice person. He wouldn't rent the rooms to bad people. April got out of the car, turned to seriously look at the handsome Aaron in the car and said, Mr. Bennett, a big thank you to you and your family for looking after me all these days. Goodbye. Aaron's thin lips moved slightly. I'll walk you up, he said. No need. You're already nice enough to me. If you'll send me upstairs, I'll overthink it, April joked. Aaron stopped moving. Since she had said that, he had no reason to get out of the car. Goodbye. April waved at him, then walked into the building. When she arrived on the second floor, she found that Aaron's car was still parked before the building. She sighed. She spent a lot of time with Aaron and knew that he was actually a good person. If she had spent a longer amount of time with him, it wouldn't be strange for her to fall in love with him, as he had said. She hadn't been back for a long time. She opened the door to her room, put down her bag, and took off her glasses. Then she took a shower and put on a v-neck shirt. After an hour or so, she checked out with the landlord, then left with her suitcase without any reluctance. Sometime later, she walked into a stylish hair salon. Soon after she was done with everything, she saw a strange but familiar face in the mirror. She had fluffy shoulder-length hair, and those side-swept bangs perfectly emphasized her pretty and delicate face. She had snow-white skin, full lips, a beautifully shaped nose along with a pair of large, bright eyes. She looked like a princess. Her face was stunning. Her neck was slender, and her collarbones were perfectly shaped. The stylist from the salon sighed and said to her, You don't wear makeup, do you? You're really a natural beauty. April gave a faint smile. She might be a natural beauty, but so what? Now she needed to hide her name. In the past year, she had to make herself look plain, but now it was time to show her beauty again. After leaving the salon, she took the bus directly to Langford College of Communication. She waited for a while before the faculty building. Then Professor Connor, who was in his 50s, showed up. He gazed at April for a short while, then sighed, April, you're so pretty. It's such a waste for you to be a dubbing artist instead of an actress. Professor Connor, you know that my grandma used to be a famous voiceover artist. She's dubbed many movies from multiple film industries all over the world. I always admired my grandma and hope that I can become an outstanding voiceover artist like her. That is also my father's wish, said April sincerely. And it's not so easy to become an actress now. The industry is too complicated. Without backgrounds or connections, which actress can truly build a career if she doesn't want to play these unspoken rules? You're right, though. Professor Connor sighed and continued. What happened to your father? It made me sad. He dedicated his life to education and art, but in the end, fell into disrepute. Sooner or later, I will clear my father's name, said April. Her eyes were filled with pain and determination. Take things easy. Don't stress yourself out. 
Professor Connor patted on her shoulder and said, I've told the college staff about your enrollment, but you shouldn't let others know that your name is April Eisenberg. Many people from the film television industry know your name. But the good thing is dubbers work behind the scenes, so not many people have seen your face. From now on, you'll have a fresh start with your new name, April Kennedy. Let's go. I'll go through the admissions procedure with you and take you to your dorm. April nodded. The admissions procedure was a little complicated, so it was already five o'clock in the afternoon when she finished it. To avoid arousing suspicion, Professor Connor didn't accompany her to the dorm. Instead, she went to the dorm herself. It was a four-room dormitory. She was a transfer student, so three students were already living in the dorm when she arrived. All three of them got surprised when they saw April. Nice to meet you. My name is April Kennedy. I'm a new student and I'm majoring in broadcast communication, said April while looking at her roommates up and down. As art students, all three girls were quite pretty. A sweet-looking girl with her hair up in a bun responded first. Welcome, welcome. My name is Annie and my major is the same as yours. These two are from the music major. Their names are Winnie and Marianne. April, your name is so familiar, the girl named Marianne said as she raised her eyebrows while painting her nails. I remember there used to be a voiceover artist named April Eisenberg. She was amazing. I've heard about her as well. But Eisenberg isn't my last name. Kennedy is. April smiled. But it's sad that April Eisenberg has quit working, said Annie smilingly. I guess she's too ashamed to continue working as an artist after all that happened in her family. It's a shame, though, because I heard that she's a genius. She can talk in ten different voices, speaks multiple languages, and apparently her voice was so incredibly beautiful that a musician once wanted to make a record with her. Episode 34. She is gone. I doubt that. Can a person actually be so good? Marianne pouted and said, Even if she was so capable, she might have been ugly. No one has seen her, said someone else. Let's move our things away from the empty bed, said Winnie, who hadn't talked the whole time. April turned back to look at her with surprise. Winnie was a pretty girl with long and straight black hair. Her voice was special and penetrative. You have a beautiful voice, said April. You have good ears, Annie chuckled and said. Winnie's voice is known as the best in the music industry. At that moment, April noticed a scornful look in Marianne's eyes. She sighed silently, feeling that the relationships between the college students were slightly difficult. But then again... All of these girls would step into the most difficult industry in the world someday, so it was a good thing for them to learn to deal with such relationships beforehand. Back in the Bennett Mansion When Aaron came back home from work, he came to a prepared dinner by Sister Emily as usual. However, he felt quite uncomfortable and had no appetite. He sat by the large dining table alone. Earlier, April always sat by his side with a great appetite. She was never picky about food. At first, he felt that she was annoying. But after spending a while watching her eat, his appetite had increased a little. After dinner, he continued doing his work in the study. He felt thirsty, so he called April's name without thinking. April, come fill my teacup. David filled his teacup and kindly reminded him, Mr. Bennett... April has left. Aaron turned back and saw David's wrinkled face. Suddenly, he lost the mood to continue reading the files on his desk. He never had this feeling before, but now he could see April in every corner of his mansion. She would match his clothes, peel fruits for him, cook, make tea, massage him, and would accompany him at work, too. At night, Aaron strangely suffered insomnia again. The next day when he went to the company, Richard saw the pair of dark circles under his eyes and joked about it. Ah, April's left. You're missing her so much at night that you can't even sleep, can you? Aaron glanced at him coldly and responded, Do you think that's possible? Richard snorted silently when he heard him. Yeah, you just keep pretending that you don't miss her at all. 
Yesterday, the secretaries from your office said that you called April's name a few times during work. Don't think I don't know about that. And if it's not this, then it must be because the night was long and you were too lonely to fall asleep. Now no one will limit your freedom. How about we go to a club tonight and play poker? He said. What do you mean that no one will limit my freedom? Aaron said unhappily. Who dares to do that? Hmm, yeah, April didn't limit your freedom, but she did manage to make you follow her words, thought Richard. All right, all right, I shouldn't say that. No one dares limit your freedom. So you going or not? Richard said while rolling his eyes. Aaron suddenly felt that it would be quite boring for him to go back to his mansion again, so he thought for a moment and nodded. At night, he played poker till 11 o'clock, then went back home. The next morning, he was woken up by a stomach ache and had diarrhea. David hurriedly called Dr. Henry over. After diagnosing, Dr. Henry told Aaron, You've caught a cold. Look after yourself at night. The weather is changing dramatically in spring. What cold? I must have eaten something bad. Aaron's face was occupied by unhappiness. It must be the lasagna from that small restaurant. I knew I couldn't go to a restaurant graded B for hygiene level, but April insisted. <clears throat> David coughed slightly and said, That you had lasagna the day before yesterday. So if it's because of that, you would have started feeling unwell yesterday. And April didn't ask to go to that restaurant. You did. Mr. Bennett, do you think it's appropriate for you to tell white lies like this? Thought David. Dr. Henry lowered his head and said, I think you have a cold. Do you know that some kinds of food poisoning have an incubation stage? Aaron narrowed his eyes, stared at David and Dr. Henry, and then said, David, call April and tell her about this. I bet she won't dare to go to that noodle restaurant again. David felt a little speechless. So it turns out that Aaron just wanted an excuse to call April. However, he couldn't speak out loud about what Mr. Bennett was thinking. Instead, he found April's number and made a call, but no one answered. Mr. Bennett, she has turned off her phone, said David to Aaron. Turned off her phone? Aaron frowned and said, why did she turn off her phone for no reason? She's not having an accident, is she? I don't think so, but she's an adult, David responded. What do you know? The day before yesterday, I sent her home and found out that she lives in Blue Will. That is the most unsafe area in the city. I've heard that rape cases happen the most frequently over there. Dr. Henry asked in confusion, How come I didn't hear about any bad things that happen in that area? David slightly agreed with Dr. Henry. He hadn't heard anything like that either. Do you need to hear about it to know? You'll understand that place has the worst social security once you see it. Aaron lifted his blanket and stood up. He continued, Let's go take a look. After all, she's an unmarried woman and completely unfair with the place and people from the neighborhood. She used to look after me, so if anything happens to her, people would see me, her ex-employer, as an unkind person. Looking at his back, David's mouth corners twitched. I've never heard you say something like that, thought David. An hour later, a car parked before the small building that Aaron had visited two days ago. David went upstairs to ask the landlord about April's room number. Ten minutes later, he came back down to tell Aaron, Mr. Bennett, the landlord said that April checked out and left the morning before yesterday, not long after she came back. Aaron's eyes immediately showed a grim look. He stared straight at David. Quite a while later, he said, she is gone? Yes. David felt very uncomfortable under Aaron's gaze. I heard that she went back to her hometown. Aaron pressed his thin lips together. David continued, It seems that nothing bad has happened to April. Mr. Bennett, you can stop worrying about her. Aaron stayed silent, brows knitted. Eh, if you're still worried, I can call Sister Leah from the nursing care center. Maybe she knows April's new number, said David. No need, Aaron said frowningly after remaining silent for half a minute. If I'll look for her, she might misunderstand me and think that I like her. 
She left because she wants to forget about me as soon as possible. That's a good thing for her. David was again left speechless. He didn't know what to say because Mr. Bennett yet again showed his narcissistic nature. Let's go back. Aaron closed his eyes and leaned against the back of the seat. He had an undesired feeling, probably because he wasn't used to the fact that April had truly disappeared from his world. However, he understood that a man would have many people that will just pass by in his life, and sometimes he can't do anything about that. Eight months later, at eight o'clock in the evening, April stood up after recording the last line. Supervisor Sullivan walked up to her, smiled and said, April, thank you for your hard work in the past month. You've done an excellent job. I've already sent your wages to your bank account. Thank you. April smiled and said, the leading cast of this web series both have great appearances and acting skills. The filming style is new and unique too. It'll definitely become popular. Supervisor Sullivan laughed and responded with, I hope so. After all, there are so many web series nowadays. April was now working hard to achieve her goals. She could have had a more stable life if she had stayed and worked for Aaron, but that is not what she wanted. She wanted to make her dreams come true. And as for Aaron, he could now walk perfectly and was focused on his duties as Arrington's CEO. He knew in his heart that he would have to eventually get used to April's absence. Will they ever meet again? Stay tuned to find out. Episode 35, Meeting Ryan. Supervisor Sullivan, do you know anyone else who needs a voice actress? April asked, eyes showing hesitation. Supervisor Sullivan paused briefly, then understood her meaning. He cherished April's talent, so he looked at her and said, A new romance series directed by Ernest Dixon is about to be finished. I've had brunches together with him. I can ask him if he needs voice actors, but I'm not sure he'll agree to hire you. How about this? I'll send him the best part of your work from this online series. He's a professional director, so I think he'll be able to tell how good you are. Thanks so much. April was surprised. She had heard about Ernest Dixon. Every star-studded series directed by him had topped the charts. If she could get the chance to work with him, she would have some hope for a brighter future. You're recommended by Professor Connor, so that's what I should do. Supervisor Sullivan looked at her in praise and said, Besides, you're even more professional than most experienced voiceover artists. And you have a great voice as well. It has been a waste for you to dub online series. All right, it's getting late. You should go back to college. April thanked him again, then took the subway back to her dorm. All three of her roommates were in the room. That surprised her. In art school, many students would start working with film companies or would get part-time jobs in the second semester of their third year. Annie was doing an internship in a radio station and Winnie was doing gigs at a bar. Marianne had a great family background, so she had already signed a contract with a record company and her first album was in preparation. Therefore, she hardly showed up at the dorm. April, you're finally back. Marianne is just leaving to attend an activity. She got us desserts and drinks, Annie said after she waved at April while biting into a piece of cake. Nice, you're already attending activities? April smilingly picked up a cup of juice. She was thirsty. The company wants me to get familiar with all kinds of activities. They've sent some experienced singers to guide me. Marianne was painting her toenails. She smiled proudly and continued, Annie left her radio station internship. She wants you to get her a dubbing job. April paused, then saw the begging look in Annie's eyes. The female anchor from that radio station was bullying me the whole time, and my pay was ridiculously little. I got so angry today, so I quit. April, you seem to be doing quite well in the dubbing circle. Could you please introduce me to someone? I can dub for supporting actresses. It doesn't necessarily have to be the leading actress, she said. I'll definitely help you if I can, but I've just finished the online series that I've been working on. Now I don't have any work to do either, said April with a serious look. Annie, no matter what kind of job you do, it's normal for you to take pressure from the seniors. The dubbing circle is also complicated. I think you're doing it quite easily, Annie pouted. Winnie couldn't bear hearing her complaint, so she said to Annie, that's because she didn't tell you about the difficulties. 
If she was truly doing as well as you say, she wouldn't be only doing online series now. April glanced at Winnie gratefully. Annie sighed and said, You're better than me anyway. April stayed silent. Marianne smilingly waved her hand and said, All right, all right, let's change the topic. Did you see his Instagram story? Ryan Rodriguez is coming back to school tomorrow. He's finished filming his movie. Ah, oh, no wonder you've suddenly started sleeping at the dorm again. Annie chuckled and said, But Ryan Rodriguez is good, indeed. He's the same age as us, but he's already made six or seven movies. He's so famous now. This time he worked with award-winning actors in his new movie. I'm afraid he'll become an A-lister this year. Hmm, he has a good background, and that's why he has great resources. Marianne clasped her face between her hands, glanced at Annie, and said, Ryan Rodriguez doesn't only depend on his background. He's good at acting, too, and he's much more handsome than the other male actors. You two take your time talking about handsome boys. I'm going to sleep. Winnie yawned, then covered her head with her blanket as she went to sleep. Winnie, are you a woman or not? How can you not be interested in Ryan Rodriguez? Annie said and then turned to April with expectation. I'm sleepy too, responded April as she stretched her arms with a tired look. The next morning, April was brushing her teeth in the bathroom when her cell phone rang. Marianne was doing her makeup. She called April when she heard her phone ringing. April, your phone is ringing. April didn't respond, so she picked up her phone from the bed and saw Supervisor Sullivan's name sparkling on the screen. She paused for a few seconds and then answered the call. Miss Kennedy, I sent your dubbing work to director Dixon last night, and he likes it. He wants you to go to Skyview Studios this afternoon. The door of the bathroom opened at that moment. Marianne hurriedly interrupted Supervisor Sullivan and said, Sorry, I'm April's friend. She's brushing her teeth right now. Please hold on a second. While speaking, she handed the phone to April. April was startled and then hurriedly took over. She was so surprised to hear from Supervisor Sullivan. After she talked to Supervisor Sullivan, Marianne asked, Director Dixon from Skyview Studios? Is that Ernest Dixon? Yeah, they wanted me to go for an interview this afternoon. I don't know if I'm hired yet. April didn't try to lie to Marianne as she knew that the latter had heard some of Supervisor Sullivan's words. Let's go. Winnie and Annie should have our breakfast ready at the canteen, continued April. After that, they walked to the canteen. Winnie and Annie had saved seats for them. Not long after they sat down, a commotion was suddenly heard from the entrance of the canteen. The four of them turned their heads in that direction and saw a slim, handsome man walk in. He was in simple jeans, yet looked as gentle and pretty as a boy from comic books. That's Ryan Rodriguez. I didn't think he'd come to the canteen for breakfast. Annie excitedly sat up straight and said, He's looking over here. Mary, is he looking at you? You two work together on a musical for the school. I think so. Marianne stuttered and tucked a strand of hair behind her ear, her face blushing. When Ryan Rodriguez walked to the table with April and her roommates with a warm smile, Marianne hurriedly stood up to greet him. Ryan, do you want to have breakfast together? Thank you, but I, I can't. I haven't been back for long. The principal wants to talk to me, so I'm just here to pick up some food. After saying that, Ryan Rodriguez turned his stunningly handsome face to April, then said to her smilingly, April, what a coincidence. I didn't think I'd see you here. My new movie will premiere next Sunday. Can I invite you and your roommates to watch it together on that day? Before his voice faded, almost everyone in the canteen fixed their eyes on April, including her roommates. Some of those people were jealous of April. Some admired her. Some were surprised. Marianne's face was especially shocked at that moment. Um, April nearly choked on porridge. Meeting Ryan here was something she was not expecting. Before she could respond, Annie realized what was happening and immediately accepted his invitation for her. Sure, sure, we're definitely free the next Sunday. I'll be expecting you. Ryan Rodriguez gave April a wink as he turned and left. Oh my, April, when did you get to know him so well? Annie excitedly put her hands around April's neck and said, You've been keeping such an important thing a secret from us? He invited you to watch his movie. Is he into you? We just had a few of Professor Newman's classes together. I lent him my notes a few times. It's not like what you think. April swallowed the porridge in her mouth and then gave a bitter smile. Episode 36. You reminded me of someone. I didn't think he'd take an unpopular course like Professor Newman's. But when did you mention this to us? You're not acting like a good friend. April smiled bitterly again and responded with, 
I was busy studying and dubbing works all day. When would I have had time to gossip with you? That's right, though. April has always been the most hardworking one among us. Marianne abruptly gave a smile and said in a meaningful tone, You may not know, but she's going for an interview this afternoon with Ernest Dixon from Skyview Studios. I heard that director Dixon is working on a new drama series, which is a collaboration between two huge stars. It's not on air yet, but everyone already knows about it. If April gets hired as a dubber under director Dixon, she'll certainly have a great future. What? Are you going for an interview? <gasps> Take me with you, said Annie excitedly. April gave Marianne a complicated glance, then prepared to say something. But before that, Winnie said, Annie, you need to think about April. How could she just bring you there? She herself is going for an interview while you have no relevant experience at all. If she takes you to meet director Dixon without his permission, she might offend him. How could he be offended? I majored in broadcasting too. I'm not as good as April, but I have skills too. I'm not expecting to dub for a leading actress, but I can do a supporting actress said Annie. She wasn't willing to give up. They usually don't need dubbers for supporting actresses, April sighed. She even lost her appetite for breakfast. I asked someone for a recommendation. That's how I got this opportunity. It's really not appropriate for me to take you, Annie. I hope you understand. Annie's lips moved slightly, but she didn't say anything. A while later, she nodded grumpily. The breakfast ended on a bad note. In the afternoon, after finishing her class, April hurriedly went to Skyview Studios. She spent an hour on the bus from the easternmost part of the city to the northernmost. At the studio, she waited half an hour in the lobby. Then the receptionist told her to meet Director Dixon in the recording room. Director Dixon paused for a few seconds when he saw her. Then he gave her a piece of paper and said, There are some lines from the series that I'm working on. I want you to do an improvised dub for these. Remember, you only have one chance. No problem. April calmly took the piece of paper and started reading it while walking toward the recording room. Director Dixon stood outside the room, arms crossed before his chest. At first, he had a careless look on his face, but soon that look was replaced by surprise and praise. April didn't know the whole story, but she managed to grasp the right emotion just from the one part of the lines. That was very difficult for artists. It was also hard for them to do an all-hearted performance without any preparation. But director Dixon felt that April was acting at the film site. April's performance was excellent and highly impressive. After a few minutes, director Dixon showed a complicated look in his eyes. When April took off her earphones, the warm lamplight poured on her beautiful face. Director Dixon's heart flipped. You remind me of someone. Her name is Rosaria Miller, he said. April's smile froze. Rosaria used to be a voice actor as well. Because of her outstanding appearance, she's become an actress. You're prettier than her. It's such a waste for you to only be a dubber. Director Dixon had no intentions of concealing his appreciation for April. Your voice and your acting skills are no less than that of professional actresses. You can sign a contract with me and I'll make you a star. Thank you for your kindness, but I only want to be a successful voice actor. April smiled and said, she wanted very much to defeat Rosaria, but she didn't want to give up her dream for that woman. Can I dub for your drama series? Of course you can, but it's such a waste for you to only be a voice actor. Dubbers usually can't make much money unless you're an established one, said Director Dixon. It's an honor to work for you, Director Dixon. No matter what price you'll offer me, I'll accept it. April knew that Director Dixon was trying to tell her that the pay wouldn't be high, but her current goal was to gain fame, not money. In that case, come and sign the contract with me. Director Dixon turned to walk out with regret. After that, a series of high-heeled clicks were heard. A group of people walked over. The woman at the front had long brown hair. She was wearing a white shirt with corrugated edges, a high-waist leather skirt, and a pair of white heels. She had beautiful legs and a perfectly shaped body. She looked like a beautiful and proud white swan. However, April quivered when she saw the face. She was surrounded by walls with nowhere to hide. Miss Miller, what brings you to our Skyview Studios? Director Dixon walked up and greeted her smilingly. I'm here to talk about the new movie. While speaking, Rosaria cast her eyes on April. She paused briefly, then suddenly covered her mouth with surprise and said, April, is that really you? Why are you here? Do you know each other? Director Dixon asked. She's here for a dubbing interview. I almost forgot that you used to be a voice actor, too. Have you two worked together? 
April suddenly had a bad feeling. As she expected, Rosaria immediately responded with, Of course we know each other. We're good friends. You should have heard her full name, too. Even though she's been working behind the screen, she's quite famous. Her name is April Eisenberg. You know it? She's April Eisenberg. The look in Director Dixon's face changed immediately. He then turned to April, eyes showing dislike. You're not the daughter of Kenneth Eisenberg who raped a student, are you? But the name on your ID is April Kennedy. Rosaria wore a painful look, said, So you've changed your name. No wonder I couldn't find you. April, you didn't have to do that. What your father did was nothing to do with you. You shouldn't feel guilty as long as you're a decent person. April sneered silently. Rosaria was trying to say that she changed her name because she wasn't a decent person, right? But that woman had been acting so kindly so she couldn't say any mean words to her. Judging by the look on Director Dixon's face, April understood that she wasn't going to be hired today. Rosaria was now an actress indeed. Clearly, her acting skills were better than before. Director Dixon, it's all right if you mind who I really am, said April. Director Dixon, April is really capable, Rosaria hurriedly said. Rosaria, I know she's your friend, but you knew that Mr. Davidson told him everyone in the industry not to hire April Eisenberg. I don't want to offend him. After saying that, Director Dixon hurriedly waved his hands towards April, as if he was whisking a fly off. You should go. I need to leave, and I still have other work to do. As Director Dixon left, April turned and walked away with a cold face. Stop! Rosaria's manager, who had been standing by her side, called April's name. Miss Eisenberg, Miss Miller has been looking for you the whole time. Today she finally saw you and tried to put in a good word for you in front of Director Dixon, yet that's how you treat her? April turned back and gave a cold smile. She wouldn't forget that a year ago, this manager named Alina Smith helped Rosaria to hurt her. No one else is here. You're falling too deep into the scam, aren't you? Said April. Episode 37, Rosaria's Tricks. Rosaria wasn't angry, but she upturned her red lips and looked at April from head to toe while clicking her tongue. April, look at you. You're the princess of the Eisenberg family, yet you're wearing such cheap clothes, and you didn't even dare to use your real name. You're like a rat that passes on the streets and disgusts everyone you're so pathetic. April felt like a sharp sword had pierced through her heart. Her face paled. What embarrassed her the most wasn't the come-down of her family, but was the fact that she couldn't use her own last name. She lost everything a year ago, but today she didn't want to lose everything again. Yes, my clothes are cheap indeed. It only cost me $20. April coldly and proudly tucked her hair behind her ear and said, But I'm prettier than you, so I look better in these cheap clothes than you do in those expensive ones. Plus, I don't even need to wear makeup. The look on Rosaria's face changed immediately. She had been jealous of April her whole life because April was better than her in terms of both appearance and learning abilities. You're so shameless, said Elena. How dare you compare yourself with our Miss Miller? Didn't you see the ranking list this year? Miss Miller is on the list of top ten beauties. Sorry, I haven't been paying attention to the current entertainment industry. The girls in that circle all look the same nowadays. I can't even tell the difference between them unless I look very carefully. And to be honest, every woman can be beautiful with makeup. Even a manager with tiny eyes and buck teeth like yours could become as pretty as a phoenix with some work. April twisted her lips and said, You could only become a fake phoenix, though, like your Rosaria. After all, you may change your appearance, but you can't ever change your nature. Shut up! Elena was so angry that she even tried to slap April. April grabbed her hand and pushed her away, then stared at her with an icy cold look and said, You better be careful. This place is surrounded by surveillance cameras. Your Rosaria is trying to make herself look like a kind and innocent little girl, so please, don't let others see her throw her weight about. After saying that, April turned around and left. She was worried that she might get drowned in anger if she took another glance at Rosaria and her people. Elena attempted to stop April from leaving, but Rosaria didn't let her. Rosaria laughed and said, April, <laughs> we'll see each other again soon. April quivered slightly, then walked quickly away. Rosaria! Elena stomped her foot against the ground in anger. Don't worry. We'll have a chance to make her pay for what she said. Since she's here to look for a job, this company must have her files. 
She won't be able to escape from me unless she changes her name and leaves this city again. Rosaria sneered and said. After leaving Skyview Studios, April regretted what she said. Because she was no match for Rosaria at the moment, she shouldn't have brought about conflict because the narrow-minded Rosaria would probably try to bring her trouble. However, she then recalled that Isaac was looking for her as well. Even if she hadn't argued with Elena, Rosaria and Isaac would still come after her. What worried her the most was that if Isaac knew about what had happened, she might not be able to continue using the name April Kennedy, or worse, she might need another fresh start. Once she thought of Isaac's name, she felt like she had a fire burning inside her heart. She wanted to die with him, but she didn't know how to. For the next few days, April didn't go out to find other jobs. When she thought that Rosaria, who was a big star busying around at all kinds of activities, might have forgotten about seeing her, she suddenly got a call from Supervisor Sullivan. April, what's wrong with you? My web series had been scheduled to play on a streaming site before and the trailer is already on the air, but today I suddenly got a message that said the series isn't approved and we can't air it. That doesn't make any sense. I used my connections and got some inside info, then learned that it's because we hired you as a voice actor. Did you offend someone? You must have gotten me in some serious trouble. April's heart missed a beat. Her biggest fear just came true. However, she didn't think that would affect Supervisor Sullivan. Can you air the series if you replace my voice? She asked. Air my ass? Supervisor Sullivan's angry voice was heard as he continued yelling. You think I haven't thought about that? I asked them but got no response. That means no, and it's because of you. April, I kindly helped you for Professor Connor's sake, and I recommended you to Director Dixon. You need to fix this. April rubbed her forehead and didn't know what to say. Hearing no response from her, Supervisor Sullivan continued with a begging tone. April, I haven't known you for a long time, but I know you're a good girl. I don't want to bring you trouble, but my team put so much effort in for this web series. Our director and I have mortgaged all our properties and invested all our money in it. If it can't be aired, then we'll lose everything. We both have parents and children who need our support. Can you please think of us and think of the leading actors that have just started their careers? They all put their hearts and souls into this series. We can't afford to lose it or else some of us might even die. All right, I'll try to fix the problem. Don't worry, said April with a dry voice. She hadn't known Supervisor Sullivan for long, but both he and the director were quite nice to her when she worked together with them. They never pulled ranks on her and helped her a lot, so she couldn't let herself bring them into trouble. Rosaria was so cruel, she knew how to target April's weakness. I'm sorry, sighed Supervisor Sullivan. I'm the one who should be sorry, said April. After hanging up the phone, she sat in her dorm room in confusion. She spent a long time thinking and then tried to dial Rosaria's old number. Surprisingly, her call was answered. Rosaria, it's me, said April. Ah, uh, you. Rosaria's careless voice was heard from the phone. What do you want? Make it quick. I'm busy. Supervisor Sullivan's online series. April closed her eyes to calm herself down and then said, Just tell me, what can I do to make you stop troubling him? You were quite arrogant earlier, weren't you? said Rosaria scornfully, and you implied that I'm a fake phoenix. Since you want so much to be a phoenix, how about I admit that you're a genuine phoenix? But phoenix is an animal, so you're sure you want to be one? said April. For some reason, Rosaria didn't know how to continue this conversation. Enough. I don't have time to play word games with you. But since we were good friends, I don't want to go too far. Earlier, I saw that you were shamelessly looking for a job, so how about this? I'm in need of an assistant. As long as you take this job offer, I won't make trouble for Supervisor Sullivan, she said. You want me to be your assistant so you can laugh at me and insult me as much as you want, right? Said April. She figured out what Rosaria wanted. Rosaria didn't try to hide her real purpose and said, It'll feel great to see the proud April follow my orders. If Isaac sees it, he'll be happy too. April clenched her teeth. She remained silent for a while and then said, Do you two need to see therapists? Rosaria, have I ever done anything that hurt you? Have I ever pulled rank on you or insulted you in some way? Why do you find delight in humiliating me? You two have everything now. You're a big star. You took my family business and you both became billionaires. What else do you want? Why can't you just leave me alone? 
We should be coming after you. Vasaria chuckled and said, Yeah, sure, you can think that way. We want to make fun of you because it's fun. I'm filming a movie in Rosewood City right now, so you can come to work the day after tomorrow. Elena will contact you. If you don't show up, I think your college will soon find out that you are Kenneth Eisenberg's daughter. I doubt you'll be able to continue studying then. Episode 38. April is out of her mind. After Rosaria hung up the phone, April gazed at the sunlight outside the window. Her heart was filled with despair. Rosaria and Isaac were like a giant cage that barred her from achieving anything. She tried so hard to run away, but now she was back to the beginning. Would she live like this for the rest of her life? Squeak? The door suddenly opened. Winnie walked in and paused briefly when seeing April in the room. April saw that Winnie was carrying some beer. I had a bad time at work, so I got myself some beer. Winnie shrugged and said, You want one? Yes. April took a can of beer and opened it. She took a sip and found the beer to be terribly bitter. Sitting in front of her, Winnie was also slowly drinking the beer. Her face was cold, eyes filled with tiredness. Suddenly, April felt relieved. She hadn't known Winnie for long, but she had learned that the latter had no strong family background. But unlike Annie, she'd never complained and had always worked hard silently. Everyone will encounter all sorts of difficulties on the road to success. Winnie hadn't given up yet, so April believed that she shouldn't feel disappointed either. You better be careful about Marianne, Winnie abruptly said to her with a low voice, and you better stay away from Ryan Rodriguez. Marianne has liked him for a long time now. April went blank. She didn't know how to respond. She had sensed that long ago, and nothing was happening between her and Ryan Rodriguez at all. Hearing her silence, Winnie frowned and continued, Marianne's family background is solid. I think that even the principal is afraid of her. Don't offend her, unless you have to. April raised her eyebrows. She was a transfer student, so she didn't know as much as Winnie did. What is her family background? She asked. It's said that the chairman of YCC Corporation is her great uncle, and the president is her aunt, said Winnie. April spewed out the beer. She remembered the president of YCC Corporation. Her name was Caitlin Bennett. So it turned out that Marianne was Mr. Bennett's distant cousin. What? Winnie looked at her and asked. Nothing, I just realized that she does have a strong family background. April raised her head to take a sip of the beer. Somehow she suddenly recalled the strange narcissistic look on Mr. Bennett's face and wanted to laugh. She also felt less depressed. Two days later, April went to Rosaria's apartment in Rosewood City. When she arrived, she found out that Rosaria's apartment was a penthouse located in the city center on top of a tall building covering an area of over 400 square feet with a swimming pool and a hanging garden. She was able to see the whole city from up there. How do you like my place? Rosaria sat on a bar stool holding a glass of wine. Her red lips curved in a proud smile as she said to April, Isaac bought this apartment for me. Hearing her words, April felt like her intestines were tied into a knot. She raised her head, eyes filled with coldness. I told him that I'd come to Rosewood City to film a movie, and he bought me an apartment immediately. He said that the hotels were unhygienic. This apartment cost over $10 million. Rosaria smiled and continued. He's always like that. No matter how busy he is, I'm always his first priority. April frowned and said, did you pay me to be your assistant so you could tell me how well Isaac's been treating you? Rosaria slowly slid off from the stool, walked up to April, and said with a soft and low voice, You're wrong. I was just trying to tell you that all the money Isaac spent on me came from your Imperial Studios. It can be counted as your money that he's been spending. The atmosphere suddenly turned icy cold. April trembled in anger. She thought of how her father was sent to prison two years ago and how happy were Isaac and Rosaria about that. She was completely enraged. The hatred that she had been trying to restrain for two years now exploded. April suddenly grabbed Rosaria's arm and said, Rosaria, since you prepare to keep me around and torture me, then you should know that even a rabbit will bite when it's cornered. You and Isaac worked so hard to take everything from my family. You spent the money lavishly, fine. But people need a face, just like trees need bark. In my eyes, you have no shame, so in that case, I'll just destroy that face of yours. Then she dragged Rosaria towards the kitchen. Rosaria was wearing slippers. 
Since she had been living like a princess these years, she was much weaker than April. As a result, the latter easily dragged her away. Elena was startled and rushed over to help. April picked up a knife, held it against Rosaria's face. Her eyes were showing a soul-deep hatred as she said to Elena, Try and come closer. April, you're out of your mind. Put the knife down! Rosaria screamed as she was truly frightened for the first time. Clearly, she didn't expect April to do something like that. Rosaria, you need to know that I'm not like you. April's hands were shaking as she really wanted to cut into Rosaria's face. You have everything you ever wanted, while I have nothing but myself. If you go too far, I'll bring you all to hell. Rosaria swallowed her saliva. She was terrified. At that moment, the doorbell suddenly rang. It's Mr. Davidson! Elena shouted while running to open the door. April's hands trembled intensely. Soon she heard Elena say, Mr. Davidson, thank God you're here. April Eisenberg's out of her mind. She forced Rosaria into the kitchen with a knife. Then April heard a footstep sound she knew all too well. A familiar tall figure came into her sight. The man was wearing a dark gray suit with well-brushed dark hair and looked very handsome and elegant. She hadn't seen him for a long time, and now she saw that the gentleness in his face was replaced by cold sharpness. She made eye contact with him. He fixed his dark eyes on her, then abruptly walked over in large steps. His icy eyes made the entire room cold. April stared straight at him. She felt her blood boiling and her mind went blank in his presence. Before she came here, she knew that she might meet him soon, but she didn't think that things would proceed like this. But she didn't care, because he would only show up to hurt her and to protect the woman he loved. Let her go, said his voice, cold as ice. If you do her any harm, your father will suffer a hundred times worse in prison. April felt like the dusty wound in her heart suddenly tore open again, and he was spreading salt on it, causing her a suffocating pain. He was even more heinous than he was two years ago. He was like a poisonous snake who would happily hurt and wound her. Feeling that April had paused, Rosaria immediately pushed her away and slapped her. Her long nail left a bloody line on April's face. April gazed at the silent Isaac with frosty eyes, but he didn't look back at her. Instead, he turned his body to embrace Rosaria, who jumped into his arms. Rosaria put her arms around his neck and said, Isaac, I was so scared. It's all right. I'm here. Isaac dropped his eyes and patted her on the back. After that, he turned to April and said, If what happened today happens again, your father will never get out of the prison. All right. You two have won. April sneered and then threw the knife to the ground. Rosaria tipped Elena a wink. Elena immediately rushed to slap April on the other side of her face. Episode 39, Isaac's Tool The sound of the slap echoed in the kitchen. Isaac's pupils shrank a little. After that, he abruptly lowered his head to say to the women in his arms, Rosaria, you're freaking out. Let's get you to the bedroom. After he finished talking, he put his arm around Rosaria and walked her upstairs. After the bedroom door closed, he threw Rosaria onto the bed violently before she could stand stably. She quivered, panicked, and turned back to look at the tall and strong man standing by the bedside. Half of Isaac's handsome face was hiding in the darkness, and the other half was filled with anger. Who gave you the right to lay a finger on her? He asked. He gripped the hand which had just slapped April. When he lowered his head to find blood on her nails, he gripped it even harder and said to her, Who do you think you are? Don't forget what you are here for. Don't think that you can do whatever you want only because I've made you a star. I can destroy you any time I want. His tight grip made Rosaria scream. She was so scared that her body curled up. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to do it just now. You've seen it yourself that she threatened me with a knife. She was trying to hurt me. Isaac, I'm keeping her because of you. Why do I have to hire her to be my assistant? As long as you're aware of it. Isaac looked at her face coldly and said, If I ever see you hit her again, I'll make you suffer ten times worse. And Elena? She did that because she was too nervous. Rosaria hurriedly explained, Don't think of me as a fool. I doubt she would dare do that without your permission. Isaac gave a cold smile and said, Rosaria, stop playing dumb with me. April fell into your lies because she was too innocent at the time. I know exactly what kind of a person you are. After saying that, Isaac turned opened the door and prepared to leave. Rosaria looked at his back, said in a low voice, April hates your guts now. You can never get her back. 
Isaac, I really feel sad to see you like this. Why do you have to do that? Shut up. You're not allowed to call me that when there's nobody around. Isaac made fists in his hand slowly, gave her a threatening glance, and then walked out. He closed the door and went back downstairs. In the bedroom, Rosaria clenched her fists. In the eyes of others, Isaac loved her so much, but no one knew that she was merely his tool. However, she believed that she still lived a better life than April, even as a tool of his, and she swore that she would make April's life worse and worse. Downstairs, April stared at the contract in her hands with disbelief. You want me to sign up for ten years? And I need to wash her clothes, clean her room, deliver water to her, carry her luggage, give her massages, deal with social engagements for her and protect her? So you want me to do all the hard work? Hmm, you're hiring an assistant who can also serve as a housekeeper and a bodyguard, and you're only paying $100 per month. Why don't you just refuse to pay? Rosaria has a bright future before her. Being her assistant for 10 years is an honor for you. Elena smiled and said impatiently, We didn't want to pay you at all, but then we decided to be nice to you and pay you a little. April's face twitched slightly. I can post this online, and by tomorrow, your Rosaria will be accused by everyone for abusing her assistant. Don't you dare. Before she finished her talking, she saw a tall figure from the corners of her eyes, and her heart missed a beat. Mr. Davidson, she said. April trembled slightly, but didn't turn back. I haven't seen you for two years. You've become much more sharp-tongued than before. His cold voice was heard. April turned back to look straight into his black eyes. Her own were filled with hatred, as she said. Surely after learning such a cruel lesson from you and Rosaria, even a pig would change. Isaac ignored her anger. He took out a cigarette, but didn't light it up immediately. He asked, No wonder I couldn't find you all these years. Turned out that you stayed in Rosewood City. Have you been in the past two years? He actually had the audacity to greet her as if she was an old friend he hadn't seen for years. April made fists while responding. Thanks to you, I've been hiding from place to place and my life is miserable. Are you happy? Isaac stared at her for a few seconds, then smiled abruptly and said, My mistake. Two years ago, I didn't know that your father still had a good friend in Rosewood City. April felt like her heart was frozen. She understood that within this short while, Isaac had found out everything about her. What do you want? She asked. Stay here. Work for Rosaria, he said in a bland tone. If you do a good job, I'll tell her to raise your wage. You should forget about being a voice actor. As long as I'm here, you'll never be able to be one. After saying that, he put the cigarette between his thin lips and lit it. His handsome face was radiating a bone-piercing coldness. Why are you doing this to me? She asked. Why? Isaac sensed bitterness from his heart. He did it to her because he wanted to keep her around him, without a doubt. Even if they couldn't be together and he had to break her wings, he wanted her to be around. You guess. His mouth corners curved in a faint and cold smile when he said to her. April's face paled in anger. Isaac said, I still have something else to do, so I need to go back to Lukesville tonight. I'll leave this place to you. He flicked his cigarette gave April a meaningful glance, and then left. Soon Rosaria came downstairs to give her an order. Arrange for the dresser and the stylist to come over. We need to attend a dinner party at Fantasy tonight, so you should get ready too. April lowered her head to make the phone call, feeling a little uneasy. She didn't believe that Rosaria will keep her around just to make her do things for her. Perhaps Rosaria still had other secret plans. Rosaria turned around and prepared to leave, but after making a few steps, she turned back and said to April, Change your clothes. Even though you're my assistant, you won't be able to enter fantasy in those clothes. After Rosaria left, April quickly searched for fantasy online, but got no results. So she called Marianne. Marianne came from a remarkably high-achieving family, so she must have been to high-end places quite often. Of course you can't find it online. Fantasy is a very low-key private club. It's not open to the public. It's invite only, said Marianne. You need to dress formally. Women should at least wear dresses. Why are you asking me this? Are you going to fantasy? Yes, for work. April hung up the phone, feeling less uneasy. She was worried that Rosaria told her to dress nicely because she was planning to sell her. She needed to stay cautious. Rosaria knew that April probably didn't have a dress, so she took the most average-looking dress out of her closet and gave it to April. April put on the dress. She was tall and slim and looked mysteriously elegant in that simply designed black dress. 
Seeing April in that dress, the well-dressed Rosaria immediately felt unhappy. What she hated about April the most was that she would always be prettier than her, no matter what she was wearing. I'll leave you to be pretty for now. Tonight, I'll make you cry, thought Rosaria. At nightfall, a light rain was falling from the sky. April was holding an umbrella for Rosaria on their way into fantasy. A cold gust of wind blew across and made April shiver. She glanced at Rosaria, who was wearing a coat, and understood something. It was November, but Rosaria made her come out in a short dress and a pair of sandals. Clearly, Rosaria wanted her to freeze. Episode 40. Drunk. They walked into a private room that had an area of over a hundred square feet. The guests could have meals, play cards, sing, dance, or taste wines in there. In the room, four people were sitting around a table, two men and two women. The two men were apparently frequenters of places like this. One of them was pot-bellied, while the other one was skinny, with an unhealthily dark skin color which was probably caused by long-term alcoholism. As for the two women, they were clearly here to keep the two men company. Uh, why didn't Mr. Davidson come? He's in Rosewood City, isn't he? The pot-bellied man asked while holding one of the two women in his arms. Isaac is busy. He received a call earlier and headed back to Lukesville, so I'm here alone. Rosaria handed her bag to April while speaking. April nervously took her coat and bag, then pulled the chair out for her. After that, Rosaria sat down slowly, elegantly. April's series of movements caught the eyes of everyone else in the room. She wasn't as gorgeously dressed as Rosaria, but still, she looked like a beautiful, quietly blooming epiphyllum while standing there. Is she a new actor from Imperial Studios? The skinny man narrowed his eyes and smiled, said while rubbing his chin, She's pretty. Mr. Davidson is flattering us by sending her here. Compared with her, the two ladies by our sides are just too average. April felt disgusting. Judging by what the skinny man said, Isaac often sent new actors to escort these people so he could build rapport with them. No wonder the company had been developing so quickly under his management in the last two years. His father would never let such things happen. Isaac used to be kind and righteous when he was with April, but now he would do anything to get what he wanted. April couldn't tell if he had suddenly become like this or if he had always been this kind of a man. She was so bad at seeing through people before. For that reason, she brought her father into trouble. Stop joking, Rosaria covered her mouth with her hand while chuckling and said, She's my assistant and is also my friend. She's April Eisenberg from the Imperial Group, and you should all know her. Since her father went to prison, she hasn't been able to find a job, so I hired her to help me. Friend. April was shocked by how shameless Rosaria was. The sensitive April soon found that the pot-bellied man's look became more meaningful after he heard Rosaria's words. Ah, so she's Kenneth Eisenberg's daughter, he said. Mr. Lennox, do you know Chairman Eisenberg? Rosaria asked, pretending to be surprised. Chairman, my ass. He was just fishing for fame and credit. If that man could be a real chairman, I'd become a governor. Mr. Lennox laughed scornfully. Yes, I know him, Kenneth Roald Eisenberg. When he was still the chairman of Imperial Corporation, I spent ten million to invest in one of his movies so I could sleep with his actresses. But he refused and gave me my money back. After that, he told the public that he despised people like me. I was wondering how virtuous he was, but it turned out that he is nothing more than this. Every single word he said was like a hammer hitting heavily on April's heart. She wanted to stand up and pour a glass of water on his face, but she couldn't do that. She had no choice but to stay silent. She could be slow-minded sometimes, but she had a feeling that this dinner party wasn't so simple. Mr. Lennox, don't say that in front of April. That man's her father after all, said Rosaria. Rosaria, you're too nice, Mr. Lennox laughed. If April Eisenberg really treated you as her friend, her powerful dad should have made you a star long ago. But instead, you had to wait for Isaac to do that for you. Don't you try to sow discord between us, said Rosaria with a soft voice. All right, enough about her. Come on, let's have something to drink, Mr. Lennox said and began pouring out his wine. April silently looked at the people in the room. Rosaria, it was so unfair for you to only win a newcomer award this year. You should be awarded as best actress. You're so good at acting, she thought. While April was thinking, Rosaria kicked her gently under the table, then mouthed at her, drink for me. 
Mr. Lennox and the other man called Supervisor Holt were proposing a toast to Rosaria. So as her assistant, April should now put herself forward and do the drinking for her. However, she wasn't stupid. She couldn't tell if these people were trying to make her drunk, but Rosaria, who used to be her good friend, knew exactly of her drinking capacity. She pretended that nothing had happened while nicely picking a piece of chicken into Rosaria's rice bowl. You're trying to stay in shape, but I'll make you fat, she thought. Rosaria was so angry, but she couldn't show it on her face. She gave an even warmer smile, finished a glass of wine, then put a hand on her forehead while waving another, saying, I still need to talk to Isaac over the phone tonight. If he finds me being drunk, he'd lecture me again. I'll let my assistant drink with you. She has a good capacity for alcohol. April sneered. Now you're revealing your true purpose, she thought. In this case, Ms. Eisenberg, Mr. Lennox directly poured April a cup full of sangria. April, don't worry, just drink. I'll send you back if you get drunk, said Rosaria keenly. At this point, April had no choice but to do what Rosaria said. Before, she would get drunk on three glasses of sangria. After coming to Rosewood City, she had managed to turn that number into four through practice. She finished two glasses of her wine and then began to feel dizzy. So she hurriedly stood up and said, I need to go to the bathroom. Go, we have one in our room. Mr. Lennox pointed at the right side of the room with a faint smile. April clenched her teeth. It seemed that these people wouldn't give her a chance to run away. After getting into the bathroom, she closed the door and took out her phone, trying to call someone to help her. However, she looked through her contact lists and found that she didn't have any friends in Rosewood City. She thought for a moment, then called Winnie. The call was answered and some noises were heard from the phone. April guessed that Winnie was working in the bar at the moment. Winnie, I'm in Fantasy Club. Can you please come here? I'm at a dinner party now and I might get into some trouble later. I need an excuse to leave, but of course, if you're too busy... That's all right. I'll be on my way. Winnie interrupted her. Don't lose your phone. Contact me anytime you need. If the situation gets urgent, I'll call the police, said Winnie. Hearing that, April was relieved a little. She washed her face, then went out. The two women who were supposed to keep the two men company had left already. Miss April, you've spent a rather long while in the bathroom. Mr. Lennox stood up, face blushed. He put an arm on April's shoulder while trying to thrust another drink in her hand. Mr. Lennox, I'm really drunk. I can't have any more. April pushed his hand away. Little girl, I'm showing you my respect by offering this. Don't think of yourself like a princess. Your father is in prison and he can't protect you now. Mr. Lennox grinned and warned April. I'm telling you this. I'm one of the shareholders of this club, so without my word, you won't be able to leave this place. April's heart began thumping. She glanced at Rosaria but found that the latter was looking at her phone and texting someone smilingly as if everything in this room had nothing to do with her. At that moment, April figured out everything. However, she didn't think that Mr. Lennox would be a shareholder of this club. In this case, it would be really difficult for her to get out. All right, Mr. Lennox, I'll accept your respect. April gritted her teeth and finished her drink. A couple of minutes later, she pretended to be drunk, lying on the table as if she was falling unconscious. Mr. Lennox pushed her a few times, but she didn't open her eyes.